Would you like to know why I am spinning around alone at this airport? Because a client from hell back there is on the same flight as me, on the same empty flight as me to Vegas. And I fired them. It was like a bad situation. So this video is gonna talk to you about how to deal with bad client situations. I'm gonna share my experiences. You're gonna learn a lot, so let's get started. Yeah. Alright guys, I'm waiting for the car to pick me up. I thought I was going to record more during the trip. I just didn't have time. But I got my notes and I'm going to talk about one of the things that you probably wonder. You're like, wait, you can fire a client? There's reasons why you can fire a client. You can fire a client because of no payment. If they don't give you the payment, you got to fire them. And that just means I don't want to work with you anymore. I don't want to associate with you anymore. It's done. Just like they would fire you, you can fire them. And it's actually very much a power move so if you don't feel represented if you don't feel respected you can fire your client because your legacy is going to be made by who you say no to more so than who you say yes to so three ways you can fire a client number one we'll discuss all of this a little bit in detail if they don't pay done the, the first thing is you want to be kind and you want to give three chances three might sound like a lot but you always want to go to bed knowing that you give someone the opportunity to make things right. You always want them to match the energy that they had when they needed the photos or when they needed the video. Like, okay, I had all this positive energy of like, hey, we need this, we need this now, we need it, we need it, we need it. But when the invoice is submitted, when it's time for the payment, they're not matching that energy. You have to let them know, dear so-and-so, according to our agreement, because you talk about the agreement that I've told you to sign, the second payment was due 10 days ago, seven days ago. Can we please discuss payment and what's the best and easiest way for you? The best and easiest way for you, you are being accommodating, dear so-and-so, according to our agreement, you're literally showing them the receipts. Then give them three business days to respond. If you set that on a Monday, all day Monday, all day Tuesday, all day Wednesday, at some point Thursday, midday, you can respond and reply to them again and say, checking in or bumping this to the top of your inbox. Whatever you want to say that is not aggressive behavior. As annoying as it is, third try, three business days. If by the end of the third day, they don't respond to you or they're aggressive towards you or they don't pay you, you've now, you haven't waited nine days. With all the weekends and everything, you probably waited half of a month. Half of a month of you saying, hey, I need my money. Hello, I need my money. And all remember, it's already late. This is on top of the due date. At this point, this client has shown you that they don't respect you and they don't respect your bank account and they don't respect your business nor your success. At this point, it is time to match the energy and speak their language. You could do two options for them and I had to pull this stunt this year. The client that I saw on the airplane was a whole other thing but they broke several of the rules, but separate thing. But this year I had to say this to a client. I said after three times waiting, plus three business days, I finally had to say, it is clear to me that your company is not interested in fulfilling your end of the obligation, even though I delivered. Because of this, you have until the end of business day tomorrow to decide which one I will be doing. Either I'm going to have a deposit in my bank account for the remaining balance due or I'm going to have more room on my hard drive and I'm not afraid to erase this footage and count my losses because you've now taken hours from me and we just we're just gonna recoup they will move they may not be happy they will not be happy but they will move you're never gonna work with them again and if you do that's on you that's your fault let's go to number two Sometimes the scope of the job changes and this is probably the most common. So this is the one I want you to exercise the most amount of caution and this is the one that is 
gonna happen to you whether you're doing photo or video and this is the one that is the most likely to be a misunderstanding so we're gonna like pump the brakes on this one the scope of the job changing the first thing is why does the scope of the job change well one of the things is that they may not like your work and they want to get less for it but they can't do that because you've agreed to something that's why we have agreements and they're gonna have to pay for the original order they, they cannot downgrade this project the other reason why they may change the scope of the job is they love your work. That's great. But you also can't go into a restaurant and order a burger and go, hey, you know that order, just, just instead of the burger, put steak and instead of the fries, put mashed potatoes and no more bun. That's fine, you can do that, but you're gonna have to pay for it. The other reason is that something has changed on their end. Their boss, their coworker, their client, if it's an ad agency, for example, their spouse, if it's a personal one, might have different requests. And if you have already started the project, you've already photographed the project or filmed it, I'm sorry, put on your big boy and your big girl pants and this is the real world. So you're gonna have to commit to what you have committed to. We're about keeping our word here and being professional. What you should do is make sure that you charge properly for it. They cannot downgrade because you're protected by the contract. They can upgrade because you're protected by the contract. A very common way to deal with this is that either- Are you gaming with me? Because this can't be going on. Okay. Oh. I'll move. Okay. So basically, when the scope of the job changes, you just remind them that the scope has changed, that you guys have agreed to something else. And then you also just want to say, hey, would you like to have the conversation where we sit down and discuss the new deliverables? It's really simple. You're not accusing them of anything. You're giving them the opportunity to fix it and they're going to love you more for it. So I know like the first one, I was like, speak their language. On this one, a little bit easier. No, why do you fire them? Like this video is about firing. Well, sometimes they're gonna say, no, no, no. Um, they're gonna just deny that and gaslight you. And they're gonna say, very few people, by the way, will do this. But they might say, no, you need to do this. No, you need to do this. And at some point, you have to put yourself in the position of, let's just say you go into a restaurant and you wanna change your burger into a steak but you're like, I don't wanna pay extra for it. Nope, that restaurant will have the right to remove you. It's really quite simple. Now let's talk about the next kind of client firing. I got my list for y'all. We might be delayed for a little bit. And since my plane is likely delayed, I'm just gonna go over the third one right now. It's about disrespect. This is a clear way to fire somebody. There's gonna be three major things. I actually wanna read them off. I'm not gonna put my paper down. That disrespect is so important to go through. So number one is you just gotta stop communication. Like you don't just, you don't need to argue with them. You never, never argue with somebody and you just say, sometimes you have to explain something and it looks like they're gonna listen, right? Like example one, when the record label president called me, I was like, okay, let's have this conversation because you chose to call me and figure this out and we figured it out I did the work my crew did the work you need to pay us right in this case when someone is being highly disrespectful with you and they might say something like why are you so stupid why can't you get this why are you so dumb why are you not good blah 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 you don't communicate anymore if they cross the line you just you be the one in control you put the period at the end of that sentence and you're like done the other one too is that sometimes people are disrespectful because a, our industry has allowed people to be disrespectful, that we've allowed people to run us over, we've allowed people to take us all the way to the bottom of the barrel and try to get free work out of us. So that we've somewhat trained them and we have to understand how to retrain, I hate saying that word, but train them back to respecting us. So by you setting a boundary, by you saying, you know what, we're not doing this anymore, we're not gonna communicate anymore, what will happen is that you've at least taught that one person that you may wanna treat other creatives one way, but you, we're not treating you that way. If enough of you and I do that, we're gonna start covering the whole industry. So sometimes you can put a comma instead of a period. So that means take a break. That means you don't have to respond to them immediately. Now, one thing that I have done with the third example of like, oh, maybe a comma and not a period, uh, when I say give them three, four days rest, one thing that I have done is 
I've also stopped them on the spot. Like when I, even though I said you could take like multiple days to pause, you can also respond immediately and you can say something like, hey, I'm gonna give you a chance to rephrase your question or what you really wanted to say to me, but I'm gonna need you to do it in a respectful way because this is the only warning that I'm gonna give you before we move to the next step. You don't have to say what the next step will be and you could take your time to figure out what that next step will be. But you draw the boundaries. You. The more you say no, the more you stand up for yourself, the more you lay the boundaries, the more you defend yourself, the less people are gonna take advantage of you, me, and everybody else watching this. We kind of have to go through this together if it's gonna work out. Your career is gonna be made by the amount of jobs that you say no to, not what you say yes to. It's who you say no to that's gonna save you from the horrible situations. But let me just go into what percentage of clients I fire. 2% of my career, that's pretty much it. That's all that I have fired. Now, I really should have been like three or 4%, but that's it. And the majority of it was in the front end of the career because I didn't know how to say no. But sometimes it still happens. Like I said, this year, 2022, one thing happened again. And I was like, nope. Because every so often you have to recalibrate people. And they know not to pull that stunt with me again. Okay, guys, check out this video. It's going to help you a lot in your business. I got to go before they start talking again. Say no. Fire people. It's okay. It's really okay.